my name is Kiva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So do you have that horrible fuse box or those shoes and you always want to cover them up but you need to have them for practicality sake? Well in today's video I'm talking about 11 ways to hide the ugly stuff in your home. I know all of these things that have been driving you crazy we're going to talk about in today's video. Before we get into today's video though please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and check me out on Instagram but let's get into it. Let's start out today's video by talking about trash cans. So trash cans are hideous. I don't care if you have the simple human one or the Kohler one, the expensive ones. I even have an expensive one and they still don't look good. A trash can is a trash can unless you like use some decoupage to cover it up or something like that or paint it so that it blends in with the wall. Trash cans are just so ugly. So what do we do to help them look less ugly? Well, what I want you to consider doing is buying a track so that you can actually have your trash can underneath your cabinets. I know you see this in a lot of luxury homes all of the time, but you're like, that's not attainable for me. It wasn't built that way. Well, there are so many different size trash cans and you can actually get kits from Bed Bath Beyond, Target, Walmart that actually allow you to install a track underneath your cabinets. All you have to do is install that track and then find a trash can that fits with your cabinet height. So in my island, for example, I do have that pullout opportunity, which is really, really great, but it's kind of small. So instead of having one trash trash can, I have two trash cans under the cabinet so that I can maximize like where I can put my waste without having to look at a trash can out and about. It's a really simple thing. You might be saying, oh, there's not enough space for all of my trash. Well, you can get two trash cans, three trash cans. It all depends upon the depth of your cabinets and the size you have, but you can really DIY this in any way possible to get those trash cans out of the way. Not only will you no longer have to look at those ugly trash cans, but you're able to pretty much give yourself a little bit more floor space. I don't know about you, but in my space, I always found myself running into my trash can. It was in the way at the island. It was in the way near my coat closet. It was just always in the way. So that's what I did to really hide that ugly essential. Next, let's talk about speakers. So many, many people like to listen to music and audiobooks when they're cooking. Sometimes it gets lonely in the kitchen, but how do we cover up those speakers? Well, you know, the Alexa, she's great. She answers all of my questions, but she isn't the most attractive woman in the world. So what I like to do is take my speakers and put them in vases. So we all have vases. It definitely depends on the size of that vase, but I like to go to home goods at home in the garden sections of other stores and get really, really cool looking vases. Some of them are concrete, some of them are ceramic, and I'll upcycle them if I want to, give them a new, new color, a new texture. You can get a vase just about from anywhere and put your Alexa or your speaker inside of it. This way you're actually able to hide that electronic but still get a really beautiful countertop or just, you know, get some clutter off of your kitchen countertop so you can have that decor without having to sacrifice practicality. This is one of my favorite little hacks. Now it does amplify the sound a little bit. It really makes the base deeper. So if you don't like that, I don't necessarily recommend this tip for you, but it's something that I love to do because it keeps my counters looking so sleek and no one ever knows where Alexa is speaking from. I absolutely adore that. Now, if we're not just talking about the kitchen, a really, really good way to hide your speakers, of course, is to put it inside of some type of closed cabinetry. So we have our media consoles, we have our bookcases, put your speakers inside of those and only open them up when you're playing the music. They don't always have to be on display. Unless you have a record player a lot of the times they just kind of don't look good so put them in a cabinet maybe even put them in a decorative box so that they're kind of out of your face unless you are actually using them the next ugly home item that I think bothers everyone is the infamous television cord. So most of us have TVs, there's nothing wrong with TVs, but really what makes a television stand out is those cords. Your DVD cord, your PS4, whatever it is you like to hook up to your television, it has tons and tons of cords. And having those cords front and center just makes your house look super cluttered and they just don't look good. No one wants to look at those cords, they're intertwined, they're red, they're blue, they're green, we don't need any of that. We want something sleek 
and sophisticated. So what are we gonna do? Sure, if you own your home and you don't mind drilling into the wall, you can actually hide most of those cords in the wall itself. That's something that's really easy to do. That's what they do when they install your security system or things like that. You've probably had it done to your home and you didn't actually realize it. Now, if that's not feasible for you, what I want you to do, well, I'm gonna give you a few options. First things first, you can actually paint those cords to the wall. Now, this is the thing that I would probably recommend the least, but this is what they actually do at a lot of luxury stores. They paint the cords the exact same color as the wall so that it kind of blends in. But I feel like this is, this is very noticeable if you're really up close because the paint is more likely to chip off because of the rubber of the wires. The next thing you can do is you can get a cord cover and that just basically condenses all of your cords so that they occupy a really slim area and you put a cord over top of it. That also looks good. What I want you to do is get a cord cover and paint and I want you to paint that cord cover. Now I don't just want you to match the color, what I also want you to do is match the sheen so that that cord cover can really look seamless with that wall. It's really, really going to mitigate that over cluttered, ugly cord situation that I know you have with your television. Beyond that, what I want you to do is get some cable management cords. So beyond that actual cord cover, you're gonna have some cords down at the bottom. I want you to get those cord management um, you know, gadgets and cover up those cords just so that they are really nice and close together. And then what you can do at the end is feed them into a cord box where you can actually plug in all of your cords and then just have to plug in one thing to the wall. This is a way to get those cords looking really, really nice and sleek. And it's something that's gonna be an arduous task in the beginning, but once you do it, you are going to feel so much better about your space. And it's going to be a habit that you keep up in this home and the very next. Now, I don't know about you, but I love having a security system, especially since we live on the first floor. It just makes me feel so nice and secure. But security systems aren't the most beautiful things in the world. So how do we cover them up? Well, fortunately, a lot of our security systems have an accompanying app. So what I do is I actually never use my security system panel. I'm able to control everything from an app. So what I actually do is I cover up that panel. And how do I cover it up? Well, I cover it up using a piece of art. So what you need to do is find a piece of art that is scaled correctly to that wall. So whether that's three feet by four feet or two feet by three feet, it doesn't matter. I don't want you to get a piece of art that's the exact same size as that security system because that's also gonna look silly. It's still gonna stick out like a sore thumb just as the security system does. So get a piece of art that is scaled for that wall. Then what I want you to do is make sure that that piece of art has depth to it. So make sure that that piece of art is on a gallery wrapped canvas. If you don't know what that is, of course I will have an image up here for you, but that's that's going to make sure that that painting is really nice and thick so that the security system isn't going to kind of bulge through the art because that also doesn't look good. So if you get that gallery wrapped canvas that is scaled correctly to that wall, you're going to be able to cover up that security system and get another piece of decor up on those walls and it's going to look fantastic. Now let's talk all about pets. So my dog, his name is Wiener. If you don't know Wiener, I don't know where you have been, but Wiener is the best and he runs my life. And I really don't believe that we should cover up dog items. I have about 10 dog beds around my house and I'm not gonna do anything about it. I love them. But what I do think is that dog toys can really overrun the house. So to cover up those dog toys, you can do a few things. One, you can get a basket and get a basket that works with your design style and make sure that that basket has a lid. So actually that basket can maybe double as a side table because there are tons of options like this, especially if you're into bohemian design, they actually have tons of wicker baskets that do have a wicker top and you just think that it's a side table. Now, if that isn't practical for you and you can't find a basket with the lid within your design style, what you can also do is just get a really stylish bin. So that's what I've done. I actually have a magazine holder and I use it for my dog's toys. It's faux leather, it's nice and sleek, it fits my color palette, it fits my design style, but it holds dog toys. And just make sure that your dog toy container or cat toy container, excuse me, or guinea pig or whatever animal you have, make sure that the container is larger than the number of toys that your pet has. This means that those toys are not overflowing. You're not going to be able to see them when you're just looking across 
across the room. So it looks really nice and sleek and people might think that, oh, it's just holding magazines or it's maybe just holding throw pillows. Wrong, it has tons of squeaky balls and all of those things that, that your pet really, really loves. Also, since we want to actually keep things practical though, I want you to make sure that this bin isn't too big for your dog to actually get in because I want my pup to be able to play with his toys whenever he wants to. So my magazine holder is actually at the exact height of his head so he's able to peek his little head in there and get his toys because we want to make these things you know practical we want to keep things practical while also balancing design so just make sure to take that into consideration maybe measure your dog's height to make sure that the basket and their head really lines up And when it comes to dog beds, you should definitely have them. But if you want them to look a little bit more discreet, get ones that fit with your design style. So my design style is very modern. You guys know this. So I stick to dog beds that are white, ivory, gray, and colors that kind of make sense for me. Of course, when you get the dog bed that looks like a hamburger, obviously that's really going to stand out versus a very simple, nice and plush bed. Honestly, I find the beds that are actually more comfortable for the dogs to be the more basic ones. The ones that are more novelty, my dog does doesn't like as much because they're not plush enough they're not comfortable enough so just take these things into consideration when you're choosing your dog bed at Costco right now they even have these dog beds that just look like faux fur blankets right but they're really nice and plush so you could do something like that it looks like an accent rug but it's actually a dog bed that your dog will actually want to sit in and that's what we want because you're going to get the best of the both worlds a happy pup and something that works with your home Now let's talk all about shoes. So shoes are super important because we, most of us wear shoes, right? Most of us wear shoes and they end up in the middle of the floor. Every single day, my, my wife says to me, hey, I just tripped over your shoes and I'm like, Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that because I love shoes. I have so many shoes. So what do we do about this? Well, we don't want to leave the shoes on display. A lot of us, we get those shoe racks. They're under our benches. They're under our ottomans in our entryway, and they still just look messy. No matter how many times you straighten those shoes, you can see the dirt on them. You can see the debris on them. It just isn't a good look. So where do we put our shoes so that we can easily access them and keep them looking good? Well, we have a myriad of options. Option one is to get a, a closed ottoman and put some shoes in there, right? Because you get your seating and you get your shoe storage and you don't ever have to look at those shoes. Option two, and this is the thing that we tend to do, is we actually have shoe racks or like shoe cubes, those really nice acrylic ones that you can get from Container Store on Amazon. And we have those in our utility room, which is in the room right before we exit our home. So the shoes are right there. All you have to do is open the door and get them. And then the shoes that we actually wear every single day, because everyone has those shoes, those are the shoes that sit out. So there are only two pairs of shoes that are out all the time. And as we switch them, we kind of cycle them out. That tends to be really, really practical. Now, if you feel like you need to have all of your shoes out, let me tell you what my grandma loves to do. So I will try to put some type of visual up here because when I mentioned this before, I think it was a little bit confusing. What my grandmother does is she gets a really big oversized decorative vase, right? So it might be something you get from your garden section or something like that. And what she does is she actually fills the vase with shoes, but the vase still does have a lip at the top. So it looks like it's more decorative. You can't actually see what's inside of it, but you can still reach in and get your shoes. Now, this is something I would do for shoes that are a little bit smaller, like your flats, things like that, things that you don't access all the time and that are really small. I don't want you to put your big boots or anything in like that because they're really hard to get at and it's a very arduous task. But things that are really simple, just put an LED light around the rim with like a nice battery powered pack and you can actually look inside and see your shoes, but you just have a decorative vase all of the rest of the time. This is great for your seasonal shoes because you never have to see them. If you want to take it to the next level, put some pompous in there, put a faux tree on top and just take it down when you actually want to access those things. I know you're saying that's not practical for everyday life. Well, practically speaking, you don't wear those 50 pairs of shoes you have on your shoe rack every single day. It's going to require you to edit a little bit, but once you do it, I promise you, your entryway is going to look a lot more sleek. Every 
single day, and I mean every single day, someone says to me, Kiva, what should I do about my ceiling fan? And I'm here to tell you, if you live somewhere warm, stop taking down your ceiling fans. Who told you to do this? I don't know, I am not gonna sweat for the sake of interior design. No ma'am, watching me pour sweat with my makeup melting down my face is never going to be a vibe. So people say, my ceiling fans are ugly, what do I do about them? Sure, you can get a floor fan, you can get a Dyson. I have a Dyson too, it still doesn't look good. It's bright blue. If blue is your color, then fine, but you can still see the fan, right? Your box fan still looks like a box fan. These solutions are not better solutions. I can tell you to get central air, but I'm not paying for it. I'm not gonna tell you to do that. That's really expensive. What I want you to do though is get that ornate five blade fan and just switch it out for a three blade fan. It is something really, really simple that will definitely transform your space. This is what I have clients do all the time. And then I also want you to ask yourself, do I actually use the light associated with the ceiling fan? One part of the ceiling fan that makes it so unattractive is that you have the light that sticks out so low so that you can use that for your room to illuminate the space. But a lot of people don't actually ever turn on those lights at all. They just turn on the fan. So if you don't use that light, don't get a light. This will actually allow you to have a lower profile ceiling fan so that it's not really down upon you. It's something that's really up in the ceiling. Now, I'm not telling you to get a fandelier. Please, please don't get a fandelier. I just think in terms of style, we're just kind of not there yet. But get that three blade fan and get one that's super low profile, I promise you, you're going to notice it a lot less. Last but not least, I want you to get a ceiling fan that matches your color palette, right? So a lot of people have the, you know, basic white ceiling fan that's just like a horrible, horrible white. You can see all the dust in it, all the debris, and no, no one dusts their ceiling fan every day, right? So it's white and it looks a little bit gray. It just doesn't look very cute. Get something that works with your style. If you're industrial, maybe get a polished chrome. Um, please don't get gold, no one get gold. Please no one get gold. <laughs> Let's not do the gold. But we can get black. We can get a walnut if we're really into mid-century modern. But let's just get rid of those ornate details. Go down from the five blade fan to the three blade fan and get something low profile and that's it. I promise you this everyday essential is going to look so much more sophisticated. Let's talk about outlets now because we all have outlets and we all have those really ugly, shiny outlet covers. So what I want you to do to make your outlets less front and center is to actually get outlets that are paintable or get outlets again that match the sheen and color of your walls. So you can find these on Amazon. You can find paintable ones. You can find ones that match the sheen. It tends to be cheaper to paint them yourself. Just be sure again to get the correct paint color, get whatever the contractor used. Don't just have them tell you I use da 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 because they're lying right get it from the source so that it matches in terms of sheen and color and that plug will be a lot more seamless now something else they have is they actually have these cord covers that actually makes um, the cord itself look really nice and flush and you're actually able to snake around the wires and actually hide them behind a piece of furniture I just have to put a picture up to kind of show you what I'm talking about because there's no way for me to articulate this beautifully but this is also another way to help your outlets look seamless in rooms like your bedroom room where you have that outlet that's kind of off center with your nightstand and your bed. You don't want everything right on top of one another, but you still want to be able to plug in your nightstand lamp. So you could try something like that. And if you don't use an outlet, you're never using an outlet. You can always plug those holes. I think the holes are really what make the outlets look really, really apparent because you have like that big black chasm of, you know, electrical outlet. So if you plug those holes, again, it's going to look a lot more flush with the wall. And for things you never use, just like that security system, you can put art and family photos over top of them. Just be careful when doing so. Now we've already spoken about televisions, but let's talk about remotes because remotes aren't cute. Now they're making remotes super, super small now. I just got a new TV and I was like, what is this? This is like the size of a toothbrush, which we love. But remotes, they're still kind of ugly, so what do we do? Well, when we're talking about coffee tables, you hear me say this all the time, I want you to probably have a tray on your coffee table anyway to kind of segment the space. If your tray does have some depth to it, if it has a wall to it, it's really easy to kind of hide your remote in there. You can't see it past the marble wall or the metal wall or 
whatever it is you have. Now, if you don't have trays, you probably have decorative books and decorative boxes because they just look really nice on a coffee table or a media console. So don't be afraid to put your remotes in there. A lot of people do that and you just take the remote out when you're using it, but we're not looking at television all the time so we don't have to access those remotes all the time. Last but not least, a lot of us have those really fancy TVs now and I can actually power my entire television from my phone. So I don't ever really need to use my remote. So again, tuck your remote away in your media console, in a book, in a cabinet somewhere until you're doing something really serious. Maybe you're trying to pay your Xbox or your PS5 or something like that and you need to bring it out. But all the rest of the time, you don't need it accessible. Just use your phone. And this one, it's not so much about covering up that ugly thing. It's just thinking about, do we actually use something and kind of tucking it away? That's what happens with a lot of these everyday essentials. We're like, oh, I need access to this. I need this. I need that. But a lot of the times that's not true. We kind of have our attachments to the shoes, to the remotes, but these are things that we can really just tuck away and help our homes look a lot more high end and a lot more clean all of the time. Now, I watch kitchen appliances really cause people a ton of stress all of the time. So kitchen appliances, we need to have them. I'm talking about your big appliances. I am not talking about your KitchenAid today. We got, you guys know how I feel about this. We gotta put them down below. We gotta put them on a rack, kind of like I said about the trash can. But for those big appliances, your fridge, your microwave, there are a few options. So if you're building your home custom, I want you to call up that developer and say, wait, <laughs> wait, I need you to do this. What you can actually do is have a cabinets put on the front of your appliances. And that means that your entire kitchen just looks like a wall of cabinets. It looks really nice and seamless. And things like your fridge, which are white or they're black or they're stainless steel, and you can see all the fingers over the top, they just look like a really large pantry, right? It's super seamless. You have no idea what's going on back there. It could literally be doors that open you up to Narnia. And no one knows because it looks super nice and sleek and we love that. You can do that for your microwave. You can do that for your refrigerator. You can do that for other appliances. Now, I you can also do it for your oven. Uh, I've not seen that done too often, but that is something that you can also do. So be really aware of what you do with your cabinets. I'm telling you, getting your appliances so that they look seamless is worth the investment a lot more than getting those, you know, really exotic stones for your, your countertops. That's really expensive. You can kind of redirect your money to those cabinet covers. And I promise you, you're going to get a greater bang for your buck. And most of the time when we're getting those exotic stones for our countertops anyway, you can't spill anything on them without having to put a layer of plastic on them anyway, which doesn't look luxe. So let's just be smarter with our money when it comes to that. Okay guys, that is it for today's video. We talked about 11 things in your home that look ugly, but that's okay because I told you how to jazz them up, how to hide them, and make sure that your space looks beautiful while remaining practical. Have you applied any of these tips? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.